It's around 11am on Monday, November 28th, 2022, and officers from the Avon and Somerset Police are arriving at a property on Wick Road in Wick St. Lawrence. That's a village that sits just outside of Western Supermare in the southwest of England. They're being called to the address due to receiving intel that a man living there has been ordering multiple rounds of blank firing ammunition and has been ordering blank firing guns online. Now, for anyone wondering, it isn't illegal to own said items in the UK, but some blank firing guns can be converted into firearms that shoot live ammunition, and that's a major concern for police forces across the UK. So it isn't surprising that sometimes they turn up at people's doors asking questions. They don't do this with every purchase though, you see certain transactions are flagged for whatever reason, and on November 28th, 2022, that's exactly what happened. Are you Reed? No. Does Reed live here? Yeah. Is he in? Yeah, he's in. Do you mind if we come in and have a chat with him? Is that alright? Yeah. Where is he? In the moment. Where, sorry? He's in bed, is he? Is he your son? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to go and wake him up? Just have a, um, a conversation, just about some information, that's all. Right, right. Do you want to speak to us, speak to us alone, or do you want to die? Yeah, I'll speak to you there. Yeah. Okay, so basically, we've had some information um, that at some point you've purchased some top venting guns. Top venting Yeah, have you still got those guns? Oh, I've got one. Yeah? Do you want to have a look? Just, 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 just one second, Reid, 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 just hold on a second. Just let us come with you, okay? Yeah, just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Reid, Reid. Do you reckon it's down there, do you, Reid? Um, it's down there somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, around there. Oh, there it is. Where did you get the police? Got it on the front. Oh, I got that years ago. Because that is actual police body armor. Yeah. Where did you get it? I got it years ago, 2013. Right, okay. Online. Okay. Do you need to keep that? Yeah. You do need to keep it too. Okay. I've got any possessed. No, but I'm just wondering. It's a positive concern when they say it that's all right. Yeah. Do you ever wear it outside? No, I don't. You just have it as like a mento, do you? Okay. Even if it's gone, have you got it? Someone assumed you're a police officer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I was allowed to keep that. So what are you doing with all this stuff? Huh? What have you got all this stuff for? What are you doing with it? What what am I doing with what? Well, I'm sure there's other people that collect it. There's nothing illegal about it. The reason reason I think it's suspicious is because we do get incidents where you get police officers who's... you know, you get instances where people pose as police officers and commit crime. Yeah. No, but also, the stuff. So you've got, like, the hand grenade with the bottom drawer, right? Yeah, and then we're looking around and there's bags of all bearings. There's, like, keys to break into places. Because mm. those, they're master keys, that's what I locks you to the door. And you know that, because mm. when, I, when I told, when I said, you realise that I knew what they were. Yeah. And then you've got, like all these different component parts for all these different guns. And you've already you've, modified you've made it. That was years ago, man. I, I wanted to get rid of that and I forgot where I put that. Right. Well, so but, there's, but there's all this stuff. 
Yeah. If I just walked into a house and just found it, I might be thinking, what's this person up to? But that's what I'm going to show you, mate. Loads of people probably got it as well. I can't believe anyone, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing actually illegal what I've done. I never, I never harmed anyone. I never threatened anyone. I've been honest with you. Yeah. Probably, must be safe. Probably, yeah. Look at probably an LST to show yeah. show it because there's so much yeah. stuff. Because every time you move something, we're falling something else. Let's see if there's any available. That's the really next thing. And then go beyond the realms of a consensual search. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. Yeah. We could potentially look at things. Well, we have. Onto it, onto it. We're trying to be more productive and more suspected than Section 4. No. Have we got any OSTs on June 2? No. Um, we've come to a premise this, um, following things out of fashion. Can we go to the first? Um, we've got to go downstairs. Upstairs. Um, yeah. Oh, Which one's the toilet, Rude? Really? It's clear from the body cam footage that 32-year-old Reed Wishhusen was on edge during the interaction with police, and it seems as if officers didn't quite catch that. Take a look at this part of the body cam. Reed attempts to feel for the gun that's concealed within his jacket. If he had more time, then maybe, just maybe, he would have pulled it out at that point and aimed it towards officers. After a search of the house, police discovered that Reed had been in possession of police body armor, master keys, ammunition, firearms, and tools that could be used to modify guns to make them lethal. So the next step following this search would of course be a chat down the police station. However, as you've just witnessed, Reed asked to go to the restroom before leaving. Just moments after closing the restroom door, the sound of a gun cop is heard, followed by a single shot. The armed response units drew their weapons. They were ready for a potential shootout. Reed had opened fire on himself. Ultimately, the bullet did make contact, but he survived. The bullet ended up being lodged behind his right ear. After he survived his own shot, he walked out of the restroom and aimed his gun at officers, which forced them to open fire. He was hit three more times. Down to earth and very shy, enjoy 80s and 90s songs, love old Resident Evil, Silent Hill soundtracks. This is how Reed described himself on Facebook. One look at his profile, that's partially public, shows a relatively normal person. In fact, most of the posts consist of Reed attempting to raise money for various charities. Reed is also spotted in the comments section on various Avon and Somerset police posts. He comments on different situations. Some people who just possess a class A for personal use usually get one to three years, give or take. But taking over someone's flat and dealing, it should have been a lot more as he causes harm to others.
So why then? Why did this little warehouse employee, a relatively normal person who sided with the law, turn on firearms officers on that day in November of 2022? Well, with what we know up until now, the evidence suggests that he was trying to dodge a potential lengthy prison sentence after being caught with converted blank firing weapons. But as the investigation started to develop, police took a deep dive into Reed's computer. And it was here, ladies and gentlemen, that something much much darker was discovered. Revenge. Yes, revenge is on my mind. It's a powerful motivator. Be nice to get back at the people who caused me stress and worry over the years. It's been eating away at my brain like cancer. Yes, thinking I'll start from primary school. The what boy. Yes, he grabbed hold of me and pinned me against the wall for no reason. I know partially who he is, plus chased me around the school. Soon I'll be chasing him down with a silenced pistol. This is how Reed opened up a four-page document where he speaks of going on a murderous rampage at some point in the future. Following his opening statement, Reed explains that he's going to carry out a hitman-style attack with a silenced handgun, targeting 10 people who have wronged him in the past. Those include old classmates who he said had bullied him and the teachers who allowed it to happen, and Avon and Somerset police officers who had rejected his application for a firearms license on two separate occasions. For those of you who aren't aware, you can legally own a firearm in the UK, but it's a long process in order to get one. Various checks are made. When a dying family friend stayed with us for a year, he got me into clay shooting, and so I applied for a shotgun certificate. 2009, firearms inquiry officer blank stated that I've got learning difficulties, childlike views of the world, that I'm unable to handle rejection, and obsess over it. 2010, Firearms Inquiry Officer Blank said I was obsessed with the Firearms Act. You can't f***ing win in this world. The document also showed that Reed looked up to UK mass shooter Thomas Hamilton, the man who killed 18 people, mostly children, at the Dunblane Primary School. It's Blank who refused me twice. I'll show him. I've got his home address. I'm going to waste him. I'll let the other firearms inquiry officers go. Let them have survivor's guilt. It worked brilliant for Thomas Hamilton. The last morning before the Dunblane shootings, he moved next door to the scoutmaster who kicked him out. He was to give him a paper in the morning and wave him goodbye before the shootings took place. This triggered survivor's guilt, the ultimate mind control. The document would go on to say that after the Hitman-style attack took place, Reed was going to carry out a school shooting at his old school, followed by an attack on police headquarters. He said that this part of the attack would be inspired by the Columbine school shooting in the United States. We found stuff that was really concerning. Chemicals, what appeared to be explosives, firearms, ammunition. So we needed the military to come and help us make some of those items safe. We needed to get a range of experts, explosives and ballistic experts to come to the scene to make it safe for the local community and to recover them to an evidential standard so that they could be examined so we could understand what Mr. Wishhusen was about. It was clear to DCI Dufal and his team that at some point in the near future, Reed was going to go ahead with this plan. To what success, if any, remains unclear. Remember, all of the firearms that would have been used in the incident were essentially homemade. There was one slight issue, though. Even though police had this mountain of evidence against Reed, he was in a coma fighting for his life after being shot by police. However, just four months on from the shooting, and surprisingly, he made a full recovery. He managed to survive without life-changing injuries. It was time to take him in for questioning. Onto a homemade firearm, exhibited as 4883 Juliet Whiskey 1. Henry, what can you tell us about that homemade, well, what's dying as a homemade firearm? Yeah, it's homemade. Okay. Is that the submachine gun that you're referring to? Yes. The one that was under the bed yeah. in bits? Yeah. Okay. So when you left it in your bedroom, was it, because it, it looks like it's, it just looks like it's been put together. Mm -hmm. um, was that how you last left it in that kind of? I don't know. You don't know, okay. But this is something that you, this is the one, the weapon that you referred to in your first interview. Yeah, that's, that's the pride and joy. That's the pride and joy, yeah. okay. 
Oh, oh is it your Pride and Joy? Because it's the first one. First one you made, yeah. <laughs> okay. So how many bullets were you planning? Because I don't know in, in amongst them this, I don't know how many made up bullets we've got. I can refer to BRM eleven, one in the chamber, two in the magazine, okay. one in your head. Okay. But I but how many do you think you were gonna what was your plan? How many are you gonna make? Because it seems like there's Looking at that box, how many do you think you could make? A uh, thousand rounds. A thousand rounds. Of nine mil. Okay. Was that, somebody, forgive me, was that your intention to make a thousand rounds, or was it just that you've got enough there to make a thousand rounds? Well, ultimately you get a thousand rounds. Sorry, sorry. Ultimately you get a thousand rounds. Ultimately you get a thousand rounds, yeah. But that was your intention, to make a yeah. thousand rounds. Yeah. And with all this, the different component parts of these bullets, could you make bullets to go into different guns? Uh, yes, the shotgun cartridges. Shotgun cartridges. But, but no, shotgun cartridges are not restricted in possession. Yeah. So no shotgun stuff is required for it. Okay. So you could make shotgun cartridges. Yeah. Obviously the ones that go into BRM eleven. Yeah. What about the um, machine gun? Yeah, that's nine mil. So you could make nine mils also go into yeah. the machine gun. Yeah. So is this pure fantasy, Reed, or is this something that at some point? was going to snap in your head. <coughs> I'm not saying that you could have done all of this, but is this something that you think you were going to do at some point? No. Because when you read it, and it's in black and white, bearing in mind it's a school attack, bearing in mind it's an attack on police headquarters, it, and bearing in mind what we've seen from your address, it's absolutely terrifying. So... No comment. Mean, so you still stand them by this is just fantasy. fantasy. Yes. And this and recording this, is it is it therapeutic? Does it help you? Yes, it's therapeutic. And in terms of the Priory School, when was the last time you went to the Priory School? When I left. When you left. You've not been back since? No. So you've not been back there to escape escape things out or look at look at things or you've not gone beyond fantasy? No. And we're dealing with something very serious here. So no, you could play the straight back to fantasy here all day. But we want to know if this is something fantasy, that's, that's all it is. really sinister. It's all just a fantasy. Is there any reason then why you were recording this in a like in a revenge document type journal, but also getting the stuff as well? Because that's where I struggle to feel that this is just fantasy of actually getting some of the stuff. And we're not talking about bars of chocolate, we're talking about a machine gun and some quite serious things here. No comment. Okay. And have you got any kind of fantasy with mass shootings and you know, we get lots of American sort of mass shootings? Any, any I've kind of fantasy? I've, I've seen a few documentaries. I say fantasy, any sort of interest or any macabre sort of interest in that sort of thing? A little bit, yeah. And you talk about Thomas Hamilton. Would I be right in saying that's the Dumbling? No comment. Where children were shot? No comment. By Hamilton? No comment. Are you influenced by any of this no sort comment. of stuff? Does that cloud your thinking? No comment. Is Hamilton someone that you look up to? No. And would you try and recreate something like what Hamilton's done? No. Shortly after police interviews, Reed was charged with having an explosive substance with intent to endanger life, possessing a firearm with intent to endanger life, possessing ammunition with intent to endanger life, possessing a prohibited firearm without a certificate, possessing a firearm with intent to cause fear of violence, possessing a prohibited firearm, and possessing ammunition without a firearm certificate. He would plead guilty to the last three offences but denied the other charges, and so he went on a 10-day trial in October of 2023. To sum up, Reed denied that he was about to commit a mass shooting in the near future and said the writings were just a fantasy, something to help with his mental health. Chemicals that could be used to build bombs were found at his home, but he told the jury that although he aspired to make them, he didn't because he lived too close to Bristol Airport.
In the end, the jury would find him guilty on all charges. It isn't difficult to see why that was. And so it looks then as if the Avon and Somerset police successfully prevented a mass shooting incident from taking place. If I'm completely honest with you, I think the shooting would have happened by now. You see, according to DCI Simon Dufal, he said that during police interviews, Reed stated that a submachine gun he had been working on was just one weekend away from completion. And if we're going off the revenge document that he wrote up, the submachine gun played a key role in the attack. So I wouldn't be surprised if the attack was closed. Peace.